welcome to the first ever running of the Rustic Ring. If the Nürburgring is the toughest test for sports cars, our Rustic Ring is the toughest test for EV towing. We have steep ascending and descending grades to really put thermal stress on the drivetrains. Crazy corner after corner to test steering systems and chassis systems. And we even have a little bit of city and highway just to get a well-rounded picture as to a review of how an electric vehicle tows. It's 85 miles long starting and ending from our office, taking advantage of some of the most beautiful landscape that we have right in our backyard. And oh, by the way, not only is it just pavement, we run dirt as well. We have lost pretty much all regen to me, and I, we are just free rolling at this point down the hill. Wow. And I think I've, I put up the boost a little bit since when I hit the brake pedal, I didn't feel anything. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome here to the office and welcome to the start of a new challenge, a new series, a new test here for Out of Spec. We're calling it the Rustic Ring. Nürburgring, which we're all familiar with, is a great place for electric sports cars and even race cars to be tested to their limits. And we've done a lot of videos on the Nürburgring, but that is from a sports car and an enthusiast track lap time setting. I wanted to develop the Nürburgring of electric towing tests. And thankfully we live right in the mountains of Colorado or at the base of the mountains, I should say. The mountains are right there. And we have the perfect loop to totally test an electric truck's thermal capacity, stability, braking performance, and overall hardcore range when being pushed to the max on what we're calling the rustic ring. Why are we calling it the rustic ring? Well, it's a loop that starts and ends here at the office. It's exactly, well, it's like 85.7 miles, but it's around 85 miles. We're gonna go all the way up to over 8,000 feet of elevation and down. It's not just like a one climb and down. There's huge hill climbs, constant hill climbs. So the trucks are always going to be in hard throttle or hard regen or hard turning. It's just gonna be an extreme total vehicle systems test while towing. And we're gonna be towing them with some really heavy loads. We'll have two classes for this test, a 10,000 pound test and a 5,000 pound tow test. Of course, for most of the electric trucks, we're doing the 10,000 pound version. I'll walk you through, of course, what we're doing. And it wouldn't be fitting if we didn't use our brand new Tesla Cybertruck as the test dummy for this rustic ring. I actually drove the loop yesterday with my Rivian and even without a trailer, I was getting into thermal limits. So this is legit. <laughs> it's, well, I'm talking switchbacks, dirt roads, everything you can imagine. So let me tell you about a little bit more about the rustic ring. I wanna talk about the Cybertruck, how we've set it up for towing. And then of course, we're gonna go run the loop and I'll tell you all about what it's like to tow with a Tesla Cybertruck in the most extreme electric vehicle towing test I could ever imagine. Well guys, we like to push vehicles to the limits and I think this one might actually do it. <laughs> it should be really interesting. Um, first of all, let's talk about what we're using to tow right now. We have our 2024, I guess, Tesla Cybertruck Cyber Beast. This is the tri-motor version. Now, what's interesting is, let me bring you around this way. We are on the all-terrain tires. They're 35-inch Goodyears, but that, it's also a tire that's good for optimized for road characteristics. That, well, you know, there's uh, hopefully going to be more tire options available from Tesla in the near future. But if you take a look right in here on the sticker, you can see we have a maximum payload of over 2,200 pounds, which is not bad for an electric truck, to be honest. I think our F-150 Lightning over there only has 1,700 pound payload capacity. So gross vehicle weight rating on this one, uh, let's just see really quick. It would be 6,800 plus 2,271. So you're gonna be right around a 10,000 pound GVWR plus or minus on the Cybertruck. What I have it hooked up to it, I should say, is a 
pretty much 9,500 pound, 9,700 pound, I guess, trailer. It's near as makes no difference, a 10,000 pound load. And when we do towing efficiency tests, we always say on the highway that the aero profile of the trailer is what makes more of a difference to towing than the actual weight. Of course, the weight and the aero profile have an impact, but on a test like this, where it's gonna be relatively low speed, I mean, some of this is gonna be like 10, 15 mile an hour, hard throttle hill climbs up switchbacks. This is more of a test of weight matters more than aero. So I can't promise we're always gonna be using the Rivian as the load, but we are always gonna have somewhere 9,500, 10,000 pounds in this class. You know, I don't, this doesn't need to be as instrumented as our highway range tests and efficiency challenges, because this is more of a, um, a subjective review of how the Cybertruck toes. We are not gonna be looking at a time. There's gonna be cars in front of us, but we are gonna log the consumption on the loop. Uh, but I, I would say it's probably not a great comparable test, but it is a great way for us to get the truck in the most extreme situation and all of the trucks that we're going to test and go, um, you know, basically make a single review of how it tows. So in this particular rustic ring, we're towing my Rivian R1T quad motor large battery pack. The truck alone is over 7,000 pounds, plus the trailer, which weighs near as makes no difference, 2,500 pounds. We are right up there at, you know, high nines. It's going to be heavy. Now I've positioned the truck honestly, with a little bit more tongue weight than I would have liked. I should have backed it up maybe another inch or two, but we're close. Most of the weight you want really sitting on our double axles. And these are two 5,000 pound axles. This trailer is a gross uh, combined weight rating on just the trailer of 10,000 pounds. So the trailer's maxed out. The Cybertruck is maxed out at its allowable. And the only thing that I would caution viewers, if you're gonna be really towing on the highway, especially and doing a long trip with heavy loads, is always use a weight distribution hitch. It is safer, uh, especially once you're cruising and if you have to make an emergency maneuver, and we do have a weight distribution hitch, I just couldn't find it, and uh, we have to shoot the video. So again, we're, we're taking it easy. Uh, we're YouTubers, we're not professionals. Don't do what we're doing. It's not, it shouldn't be dangerous, but a weight distribution hitch is highly recommended from my side when you're towing something that weighs significantly more than your tow vehicle. That's really the one thing I wanted to get out of the way is say, okay, in the future, you'll probably see us using a weight distribution hitch. Um, so it's not all perfect, but tire pressures on the trailer are set to 65 PSI. That's where they need to be. The Rivian, <laughs> it's going to be along for the ride. It's going to be a bumpy one uh, because let's talk about the loop. The loop is really interesting. Um, we are going to go from here in Fort Collins, Colorado, all the way up to the top of uh, Wrist Canyon. And that is a very steep, consistent climb up to 8,200 feet of elevation or so. And what I love about that is right after the big climb, there's switchbacks, low speed, lots of throttle that will rapidly heat up the electric motors. Again, electric motors, when they're turning slow and you have to send a lot of current to them, that's them working hardcore overtime. It's the most stressful thing you can do to an EV. It doesn't have all the airflow to cool everything because you're going slow uphill and going around these switchbacks. Uh, but I love right after that hill climb, there's a long multi-mile descent down to, I think 6,000 feet or something like that, but it's a hardcore straight regen test. So you're gonna be sucking all the juice out of the battery straight to hardcore regen coming on the downhill. Really a serious challenge. Uh, after that, there's going to be a lot of turns and it's a very tight road. And so it's gonna be throttle regen, throttle regen, throttle regen. And my driving style for all of these, because it's such a long loop and it's not a constant speed, to be totally honest, it's probably, there are gonna be variances and differences, but I'm always gonna try and drive the same way, which is how I would be driving if I had 10,000 pounds on the back of my truck going through very tight, twisty mountain switchbacks, which is gonna be fairly conservative. No canyon ripping here, folks. Uh, this is pushing the trailer and the truck to its maximum. We need to stay safe. And uh, so yes, while we do wanna test the trucks, I think it's reasonable for us to drive like a reasonable consumer on the rustic ring. Why is it called the rustic ring, Alyssa? No, <laughs> her mic's not on, I'm sorry. But it's called the Rustic Ring because we go through the town of Rustic, Colorado. All these little mountain towns, that's where we turn off onto, I think it's 
Highway 69, Route 69, uh, and then we go up a very twisty dirt road um, up to, again, another high peak of over 8,000 feet of elevation. So what do you say I show you how I've got the tow hitch hooked up on the Cybertruck? Uh, we'll get everything hooked up. We got to strap the Rivian down. It is strapped down now. So we'll play all those clips in a moment, and then we'll hit the road and go on our first ever rustic ring loop. So this little panel normally sits right in here. You have three little screws that are right underneath from the back side from the bottom. You just undo three of those and um, yeah, then we get access to our seven pin connection, four pin connection, really nice that it has both. Great, let's get the uh, BMW hitch on there and uh, get it hooked up to the trailer. So hitching up the Cybertruck, of course I've got the uh, receiver, the ball in there all attached. One thing that the other trucks have, which is nice is uh, a little line to line up the trailer hitch with the uh, trailer. However, I'm not in tow mode, so I wonder if I come here and go to trailer mode. We have a couple different brake boost settings, so we'll get into this in a minute. Um, okay, lots of things to look into here, but I just want to see if that brings up the line on the camera. Let's cycle it. Uh-oh. No, it does not. So, not possible. Even if I cycle the screen, reversing camera, nope. Still don't get the trailer lines. Anyway, worth a shot. Let's get it hooked up. All right, well, now we've got it all lined up. Let's put some weight on this thing for the first time. Now, um, I always recommend using a weight distribution hitch when towing typically over 5,000 pounds, but more importantly, when your trailer is significantly heavier than your electric or any tow vehicle. Guys, while I'm hooking up, I just, <laughs> a little stupid thing here. I had this hooked up to the F-150 Lightning beforehand, and uh, that truck apparently sits just a bit higher than this one does. And you can see I can't get my um, my uh, stand, my jack here, any higher. So uh, it's actually not going to come off the ground. But what I can do is I can raise the suspension on the Cybertruck, pick everything up, and then I'll be good to go. So one second, I'm going to go raise the suspension. Well, that is all I needed to get this thing off the ground now. No problems at all. And uh, that was awesome. I may want to adjust the hitch after. I just am going to get some load on here for the first time. And then we can, uh, yeah, once I get this all hooked up, chained up, lighted up, let's see how that process goes. Before we just finalize up our connection, I want to see if that pulls up trailer mode. It seems to have engaged trailer mode. I disengaged it just before. So we have a few different options here. And um, so trailer brake boost, what is this? So this is how aggressively trailer brakes apply. So first calibrate your gain and then boost based on how you typically apply the brakes. So let's start on five. That's just kind of right in the middle out of, I assume 10, we'll turn on the truck here. Hold on, climb it off. We are charged again to 100%, 301 miles indicated which is maximum charge range. So it's not letting me adjust my gain or my boost. Why? Hold to brake trailer. Wow, what the heck? Oh, maybe I gotta go in here. Interesting, so it doesn't, this doesn't work, but this works. <laughs> Explain that to me. So it must just be a little software bug. First software bug I've had, but of course you can go all the way up to 10. We'll start probably at five. Maybe we'll go up to six or seven. This is a heavy load and we will have some steep grades throughout it. So we'll go, let's just put it in the middle. We'll put brake boost in the middle as well. I'm guessing this is, you know, it's basically how quickly it applies the brakes. I don't know. It says Tesla recommends low. Huh. Well, that's fine with me. That's fine. And I love this feature. Right scroll wheel. Sorry. Go away, Andreas. Um, right scroll wheel trailer brake. This is a fantastic feature. I use this in my Rivian a lot. If I have an emergency situation, I just need to get slowed down or anything, you know, even a little bit of sway, you can just kind of hit that right scroll wheel a little bit and it just grabs the brakes a tiny bit. What I don't know is how to activate cruise control with this. And I'm not sure there's a way because it says replaces follow distance control. That's good for this test, but I wish there was a way I could push and hold or a double press to get to cruise control or something. And then it says adaptive regenerative braking. And it basically says automatically increases regenerative braking to provide more stopping power based on the uh, weight 
the estimated weight of the trailer. Definitely want that. Have never seen that in another electric truck as well. Um, normally what I see is uh, trucks with settings that say, do you want us to apply more friction brakes? Uh, because the regen can't handle it. Where Tesla's just like, do you want more regen? It's like, yes, give us all the regen. So we're gonna turn on all the things. The trailer alarm is essentially if someone unplugs the trailer, I guess it sets the alarm off. Trailer light test. So I'm, we're running that right now. Let's take a look. This is great if you're a single driver and you need to do a light test. We still have to strap the Rivian down. Probably need to put a little bit farther back. Whoa, zoomed away in. Sorry, guys. Filming quality on zero. Oh, this is great. You can see the lights going. Turn signals flashing. So we know the rear lights are good. We know the side lights are good. I just saw it go there. Nice. We've got the tire pressure set on the trailer to 65 PSI. That's where they like to be. But even then they're looking under load and they are because this Rivian weighs quite a bit. So yeah, let's get her strapped down and send it for the run. All right, well, let's uh, let's do this thing. Trailer brakes are good. Trailers all uh, feeling nice. Just backing it up over to here. No major issues, even with steer by wire, which I thought would be weird. Again, the rustic rings are all about the vehicle dynamics, what it's like to tow on flat ground, hill climbs, descents, and corners. So you'll get a lot of driving impressions from me. We're going to run climate control. We're going to go over here to trips. We're going to reset our trip. Bless you, Alyssa. Thanks. We're going to go call it the rustic ring. Oh, it's capitalized. It shouldn't be, but it is. That's fine. And um, average uh, consumption for this vehicle is just about two miles per kilowatt hour or 500 watt hour per mile. Let's see what we're at over this, because again, we're going to start and end at the same elevation, but it's just going to be crazy. If I pull up the towing and hauling menu here just briefly. Also, there's a new menu, Bluetooth. Didn't know that was a thing. Uh, towing and hauling. We are in trailer mode. Tesla recommends a brake boost of one. I probably will play around with that throughout this test. And um, I have adaptive regenerative braking on. Now, a lot of you will say you never want to tow with an electric vehicle, especially in the mountains, at 100% state of charge. And you would be correct because you want to take the heat away from the physical brakes and put them into the regen braking. But trust me, by the time that we get all the way to the top of Wrist Canyon, for the before we get to the D, uh, the descents, we are not going to be at 100% uh, state of charge anymore. So, And we are heading out of the powerhouse on the rustic ring, leaving at 245. I'm not sure we should time this. No. <laughs> it's not a race. But um, yeah, we are being tailgated by a Rivian. <laughs> All right, let's head out. I'll talk to you guys a little bit of how this thing's feeling initially. I will say, um, let's see, we have the acceleration in sport, which I think is a pretty reasonable setting for uh, driving. We don't need beast power. We have, uh, we should probably put ride and handling in focus just to help carry the weight of the truck to stiffen up the dampers a little bit of, uh, you know, there are trailer load and we're good to go. The one thing I do have off is apply brakes when regenerative braking is limited. I do not want, I want to feel when regen is limited and then I can hit the brake pedal to compensate. So, man, this is super exciting, Alyssa. The rustic ring. Yeah, and so this is uh, one, two more stoplights and then we are home free to run. And we already have quite a bit of regen as we've dipped down to 99%. 298 miles. It'll really be interesting to see how many rated miles we use. Oh, this is weird, Alyssa. The steering is so quick, even with the trailer. I would have thought they would have slowed down the steer by wire, but no, it is the exact same tuning. And that, if you have to, like, if you're not used to it, thankfully I've driven this truck a lot, but if you're towing with a Cybertruck for the first time, that could be dangerous because you might put in way too much steering and induce uh, trailer motions you don't want. So I'm, you have to really drive this like it is truly steer by wire, which it is. And they have not changed the ratio, which I was hoping they were going to slow down the ratio. Uh, one last comment on the ratio portion, the Silverado EV, the F-150 Lightning, both of those trucks, especially, uh, I know this for sure for the Silverado, because I did an interview on this channel with one of their vehicle dynamics engineers. They had to take the compromise of a very slow steering rack for towing safety. And this is probably the quickest rack in any vehicle and we're towing 10,000 pounds. So it's something really to be mindful of 
and I'm not liking that right off the bat. But I will say in terms of acceleration, of course, there's plenty on tap. And the one thing I wanted to mention, Alyssa, is we are towing a lot more weight than we typically do with our Rivian. So feeling a lot of this extra, you know, stress on the vehicle, more or less, you know, this porpoising. <laughs> People are literally taking videos of us as we're driving. Um, this extra stress on the vehicle is uh, because we have about 3,000 pounds more than we typically do on the back. We are now six miles into the rustic ring and it's been a very gentle six miles Both the beginning and the end of this trip are pretty flat ground and you can see even at very low speed on flat ground We're at 831 watt hour per mile Which is really juicy <laughs> That is a lot of power and you can feel the weight 10,000 pounds is no joke But now we have just started on wrist Canyon, which is the hill climb uh, in a little bit we go through a little town here and then pop up to speed after that so just a little knocking from the trailer nothing to worry about things are under tension of course so let's just hope they get out of the way and we are good to go so let's uh, head on up people are just like stopping around us and I'm like everyone out of our way don't look at us we just got to get through <laughs> reached our first corner and this is where the steer by wire oh it's weird <laughs> and I love the steer by wire without the trailer but just with all the weight you put in a little input and you feel obviously the truck move and then the trailer it's not like it's uh, dangerous or sway but you just you know you're constantly aware of how much weight you have behind you and so yeah we're gonna take it really easy on this rustic ring but we are going to be climbing all the way now one thing that i think could be interesting is at the top of the hill climb uh, right here i want to know what the um, truck thinks we'll make it there with in terms of percentage so it says 70 percent state of charge in 10 miles so it thinks we're going to lose roughly 25 percent over 10 miles keep in mind this is a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack so yeah, it's uh, no joke, and it seems to be accounting for the trailer so far. This range does not seem to be accounting for the trailer up here, but um, this one seems to be doing a good job. Let's see if we're actually at 70% at the top. I'm just going to drive, again, very normally, gently, nice and slow. I'm actually going to let some traffic building up behind us pass. So let's let them go by, and then we can uh, continue with this test. as I always do, Alyssa just help me to the right, we should be good. Um, as I always do, I was just double checking our load before the hill climb, always after the first couple miles, tighten the straps, check everything again, make sure you're totally solid because um, man, the last thing you want is a Rivian falling off a trailer <laughs> in the middle of the mountains, which, which by the way, we will have no cell service for any of this. So if anything breaks, we're walking back. So, yep. Let's uh, start going up the canyons, doing the hill climb. It's going to be ripping on everything. Again, developing the procedure, seeing what we want. But uh, yeah, let's uh, check in with you guys in a few miles after I figure out how well this thing tows. Certainly in terms of power, this would be kind of a cool place to feel. Oh man, it just spun the front tires. Did you feel that, Alyssa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's got plenty of power to spin the tires. Um, that also tells me that maybe, you know, when you really nail it, all the weight comes off the front, but I, I have, again, as much weight towards the rear of the trailer that I can get. I don't think we're over tongue weight here. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go have some fun. We are just starting out. Really only a few quarters in. I can already hear the pumps kicking on, extra cooling going. And again, just driving how I normally would if I was towing up this road very gently. And already I can tell it's really putting a strain on this thing. I should mention that we will try to always start this test with the battery packs at a reasonable operating temperature. 
especially in the summertime, I don't want to start with an already red hot battery pack. So in the case of this uh, Cybertruck, it sat at the office overnight at about 65, 70% state of charge. And then this morning I juiced it up to 100. It completed, sat for about 30 minutes, and then we started the tow test. So um, yeah, I feel like that's about as cool as we could get the battery to start. So if we have any thermal limiting from the battery pack, well, there was no way for us to get it colder really. And I'm not sure what we'll decide to do with the start of all the tests. I mean, I could see an argument to start after a DC charger. Um, but either way, I think it'll just be what it is for whatever test we end up doing. I think the motors are going to be more of an issue than the batteries in this test as well. That's my guess. So, yeah, just cruising. I need to issue a quick correction. I'm in the future. I've just figured out how this pushing to brake thing works. If you push, you still get adaptive cruise control, but you no longer get distance adjustment. If I push the um, stock to the right, then it grabs the trailer brakes. So that's how that works. I think that's pretty smart. And honestly, with towing, you probably want the adaptive cruise set pretty far away. Yeah, when you rock it to the right, then it grabs the brakes and distance control you want on a long distance anyway when towing. So that is a great setting. This one right here, right scroll wheel, trailer brake. Love that feature. Well guys, we have reached the start of the first long duration hill climb. And you can see here, we're giving it beans. Now we are at 1500 watt hour per mile and I'm just climbing this hill. Again, trying to keep it right around the speed limit ish. And it's just going. I mean, we're only at about half throttle right now, maybe even a little bit less and it just has all the power in the world still available. Um, what's interesting to me is even at 83%, we have some regen dots here. They haven't fully gone away, but I don't think that's due to the tow test. That might just be due to high state of charge and the fact that we have this adaptive regenerative braking turned on, which really ramps up the regen, but still making our first major consistent hill climb here. And um, no issues with power at this point truck's towing fine. Honestly, I'm getting a little bit more used to the steer by wire, just remembering to put in extremely gentle inputs, more of a pressure than a movement. And I am absolutely enjoying towing with the Cybertruck. This is a dream. It is so cool and I have to say it feels extremely capable, even though we're at max weight and in extreme environment. Uh, I'm comfortable, feel nice. Barely, I mean, I know there's a trailer behind me, but um, yeah, really enjoying it. hill climb one of two and by hill climb I mean we've been on constant hill climb this whole time but I'm talking switch backs this is hardcore so we need to really be uh, careful here coming up the hill other cars especially sometimes overshoot it a lot of accidents here so we're just gonna take it with some caution uh, we're 18 miles in to the journey 1787 watt hour per mile and here we are just climbing up the switchbacks. Again, hard load, low speed. This is what's really rough on electric motors is coming out of these hills or even getting wheel spin <laughs> a little bit and accelerating on the way up here. I mean, this is hard load on this thing. That's awesome. A little bit of regen to scrub some speed. Look how little I have to turn the wheel just have to be so gentle with it yeah this is extreme I mean for an electric vehicle these slow speed hill climbs this is what rapidly heats up inverters stators 
yeah. Man, 10,000 pounds on this thing. Even some traction control there, I just felt. And Tesla said we'd get up here with 70%, right, Alyssa? Mm -hmm. And guess what? We're at 71. 71. So that's the big first hill climb. And then we have to go down to straight regen, 12% grade now, boom. Look at that full regen. The one thing I want to try is this adaptive regenerative braking. So if I hit, so this is normal regen right now, and you can actually see we're gaining speed. But if I hit adaptive regenerative braking, oh, you feel that Alyssa? Mm -hmm. It's just clamped a little bit more and it's holding us. So that's maximum regen right there at 71% state of charge. And you can see the regen dots are coming in. We are getting things hot. We also could have a cell characterization issue. I'm gonna have to just a dab of brakes, physical brakes. Oh yeah, look, it's it's coasting. I'm full with adaptive regen on right now. Oh my goodness, hard on the brakes at the moment. Maybe we should turn up our gain a little bit. <laughs> Let's go up to six on the brake gain. Brake boost. Yeah, I don't know, this feels, now it feels really heavy. Oh my goodness, look at this thing. It just wants to almost free roll. So we are using a lot of friction brakes coming down here. I did not expect this at all. This is really interesting. And um, certainly at lower state of charge, we'll have another dis uh, descent to see if state of charge affects towing. But that is, look at this, even with adaptive regen, look at the dots right here. It says regenerative braking temporarily, well, you'll see it here, temporary uh, limited. So we have lost pretty much all regen to me. And I, we are just free rolling at this point down the hill. Wow. Dab a trailer brakes. Six might be a little bit too much. <laughs> wow. How about that, Alyssa? And look at that. I'm full off. We'll see if we can get it to stop by the end of the straightaway. But that's max regen. Again, 73% state of charge. It should be able to accept a bit more. Would be my liking, especially since, again, we're towing at these state of charge ranges. And uh, I'd be really curious to see the behavior at 20% state of charge if it could retain all of that. But look at this, still not stopping. I'm so glad we do this test. We also have no cell service up here because this is great information to have. What I can't wait to see now is if other trucks also has it. Look, it still hasn't stopped. There we go, now we're in auto hold. Regenerative braking features temporary limited. Decel, use brake pedal as necessary. And I think I've, I put up the boost a little bit since when I hit the brake pedal, I didn't feel anything happen. The brakes on the Cybertruck alone are not great. And then you pair it with 10,000 pounds on the back and it's really not great. Look at the kids in front of us here taking photos up at their school, <laughs> waving, hello. <laughs> So that's, uh, everyone loves the Cybertruck in person though, I gotta say, it makes people so happy. So yeah, but that's been interesting. Let's see how long it takes for the regen dots to go away, but we're gonna continue. What we have now after that incredibly long hill climb and deceleration, you know, we are regen, so we're down to 1600 watt hour per mile at the moment, is we have a really tight section that's actually downhill most of the way. So this is still gonna be pushing throttle, regen, turning, putting the steer by wire under stress. And um, now's the time to really test this thing out. I have no regen at the moment. That's off throttle and it's barely, barely slowing down. We're cut, I would say 60, 70% of regen is gone. I shouldn't say no regen since there is some. It's not a complete loss, but wow, that is wild. <music> Coming close to an end of our 
uh, second road that we're on here, Stove Prairie. What I'm curious to see is if the adaptive regenerative braking, now that we're so limited, even makes a difference. And I think the answer is no, not at all. It's just totally pegged. And the cooling fans are running and I can actually just start smelling uh, some of the friction brakes uh, heating up and you know, they produce that brake smell. Yeah, starting to smell brakes. <laughs> and so thankfully now we have a pretty, I would say, slight elevation gain coming back up uh, Poudre Canyon as we're about to make a left here and head up towards Rustic, again for the Rustic Ring. So let's go left turn signal. Let's see if the regenerative braking comes back at all. We've gained some state of charge. We're at 76% right now, but just hitting the brakes as we come in. Let's go for it as we head out to Rustic. That's our next turn, and this should be um, relatively flat, a little bit higher speeds now, but a lot of corners. So you're gonna have a lot of acceleration out of corners and a lot of regen into corners. So really at no point is the truck ever just gonna be sitting in a constant state. It's either gonna be regening like we are now and then accelerating out of a corner. It's never just gonna be sitting there coasting. It's a lot of work for it the whole way. There are one or two straightaways on this uh, that it does have a chance to cool down, but that's it. One or two out of hundreds of corners that we're gonna hit today. just are getting regen back. One little dot at the bottom, which is kind of where we started. And if I lift off the throttle now, there we go, big regen. So um, again, I think it just needed to be under load for a while. We are now at, uh, you know, one hour per mile has come down to 1145. And again, that's just because we went up to that peak, we've leveled off. We're gonna go back up over 8,000 feet again on dirt, which is where we really test the four wheel drive, the powertrain stuff under load while towing. I just, this is really no joke, this rustic ring that I've put together. So I, can't, I gotta be careful if you look in the mirror here, I don't want the Rivian hitting the rock walls as we're coming around. Take a look up here at this close one. We gotta leave a little bit of extra space because the trailer is always a little bit just inside of where I wanna be. <laughs> it's crazy. And just the views out this massive windshield are of course gorgeous. If any of you ever have a chance to visit us or if you're uh, here in town, you definitely should come up to our amazing Canyon Roads and just experience these. Like this guy's stopping right when I need to go a little bit wide to not hit a rock wall. We have some climbers here as well. Yeah, pretty cool place. Rustic Colorado. This is why it's called the Rustic Ring. We also have the Rustic Resort right here. But this is where we're turning. Larimer County 69. County Road 69. Um, before we go too far up, I'm just going to double check, secure the load, make sure the Rivian hasn't shifted because it's about to get real bumpy, as I'm sure you can imagine, up this road. So let's come to a stop. We are at 60% state of charge. I think we should compare against uh, multiple vehicles, the state of charge check-ins throughout the drive. So we were at 70 at the top of wrist. It's been quite a few miles since then. Again, just meandering at rough the same, roughly the same, um, elevation so we're at 60 percent here 1156 watt hour per mile total still 
So we're about to climb all the way back up to 8,000 feet, but this time on dirt. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. I'm just gonna make sure none of the straps have come loose on the Rivian, and then we will continue with our drive. Um, had to make a couple adjustments. The truck sh seems to have just shifted a little bit. Whoa, <laughs> spinning tires to get this thing moving. One thing with the Cybertruck being a tri-motor is the front motor is the primary axle. That's a permanent magnet electric motor. In the rear, there are dual induction motors. And um, that means that under normal conditions and really as much as possible, the Cyber Beast is trying to be front wheel drive, believe it or not. And you feel it in snow and ice and in situations like this. So, um, yep, let's cruise past this little doggo and we're on our way up, so. Yep, let's roll. The lady's so confused. I don't know if she wanted to talk to us or not. No. She seemed to. Whoops. We got a test. We are making the climb a oh, little washboard. Staying in it though. I really wish Tesla would let us say, hey, just keep the induction motors pushing most of the time rather than the front wheels. But I mean, it's got plenty of power on tap, no question. <laughs> this is no joke. I have the <laughs> traction control. I have put the um, trailer. What have I done? I've put the suspension into relax just to try and give it a chance to work a little bit more for this section. And uh, certainly this is the first time I've actually had my Cybertruck on dirt, believe it or not. We have to do all of our off-road testing here coming up soon, but we're just getting up to the crazy switchbacks. If you zoom in up there, you'll see that guy's doing a hill climb all the way up the hill right there. And so this is going to be extreme. I honestly don't even know if this is going to make it. One thing that's funny is when the vehicle goes into auto hold, the brake pedal goes whoa, all the way into the floor and the parking grade is so steep that it says it may not even be able to hold it. And this is where maybe some of the limitations of the Cybertruck are coming through. A lot of really hardcore electric trucks, uh, especially meant for towing and hauling and off-roading, will have physical park locks in the front and rear motor. This just uses a, an electronic parking brake in the rear, which especially when the brakes get hot or you have a huge load, you're only braking on one axle, whereas other vehicles will have dual park locks front and rear for the extreme stuff. And this is the reason why you may want that because I'm getting a warning that says, hey, I may roll backwards if I get out of the truck. Therefore, um, yep, don't want to uh, don't want to get out of the truck. So Alyssa's coming up and uh, yeah, just waiting for her to get in the truck. We are up here just getting a couple shots. It is beautiful. And man, this thing was digging. I had all four wheels spinning on the uphill. It was wide open. It was just letting the traction control systems figure everything out. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of weight. Man, do you really feel it on dirt when all four tires are really just uh, scrubbing to get traction? That was sick. And it is gorgeous up here. Wow. We've stopped for, I don't know, one and a half minutes, which ah, maybe we really shouldn't do because it does kind of let things cool down a little bit. But that was kind of the major hill climb. But it continues that we have a deceleration. But I actually hear no cooling on the truck at all. I mean, there are active shutters down here and they're closed. It just doesn't even seem to be caring about any of this stuff from a thermal perspective. It might just be a cell regen thing. How was that hill climb walk? <laughs> Maybe uh, we need a drone. <laughs> elevation is, is tough. Yeah, we're up there. Yeah. 
All right, ready? Well, guys, we have just finished the initial big hill climb, and uh, my comments about the powertrain control stay the same. It still feels like it uses the front axle for a lot, and then if I just lay into the throttle and just mat it, like even here, if I just floor it, you can see traction control's going, I'm mad at, that's everything it can do. Uh, then it's given me all four motors, of course, or all four wheels uh, ripping all three motors. So you just sometimes, if you get a little bit of front wheel spin in the Cyber Beast, just stay in it and maybe even give it a bit more just to get that rear motor really cranking. And yeah, once you get that, it's, you know, it's no lack of power. It can just spin the tires anywhere as I can demonstrate here. So yeah, we don't want to do that too much because again, we're trying to drive like a normal customer would, but this is our first one. So we're also still figuring out the testing procedures and the loop and, and everything. And wow, it was so cool. i uh, met some construction workers, some line workers, I should say, electricians that were putting in uh, fiber optics for the substation that's up here. You'll see that in a moment, it's kind of cool, uh, but it is just the, one of the most beautiful places on earth. But I will say Tesla's drivetrain control is doing great. Doesn't seem to be caring about this and uh, you know, truck feels pretty solid we got a lot of stuff in here that's rattling but i don't really hear anything from the truck do you Alyssa? uh no it's just a lot of road noise yeah i would say even not a lot of road noise i think it, it, i think it's pretty good for what this thing is so yeah beautiful up here let's continue <laughs> substation where we're going to do another state of charge check-in so we are at 51 percent state of charge at the moment so we have burned uh wow almost 10 percent state of charge nine percent on just a very short loop but that hill climb was pretty gnarly so this is where we exit larimer county 69 and we go to 68 c and we have uh, a few miles to go down this way just more kind of flat meandering roads nothing crazy but that is that was a serious hill climb that was traction limited <laughs> so you had to deal with weight powertrain control stability with the trailer that's what i call an extreme test right there Alyssa. the end of the dirt section you can see we're still at 50 percent so you know very meandering uh so far we have used 50 percent and gone 49 miles but we're still over 1100 watt hour per mile in our consumption but now starts all the downhill so let's get on to 74 east which is a beautiful road the views are going to be amazing and let's head on down back into town um, we have again twisty downhill and then at the end actually a little section of high speed 65 mile an hour almost highway simulation to get a really good sense of what it's like to tow with the cyber truck on a highway situation so we're really experiencing everything with this uh, rustic ring we're experiencing maneuvering around the parking lot at the office city driving a hardcore hill climb ascent descent uh, dirt road towing if you live up in the mountains you definitely need to tow on dirt a lot of people do and a little highway section at the end we're really covering all of our bases here
Well, viewers, we're starting our descent down, and pretty early on, take a look down here, Alyssa. You can see we already have the regen dots. Ugh. So, one thing for sure is maybe state of charge doesn't matter so much because it's almost instantly that we start going downhill. It's like, oh, we can't regen anymore. I'm really curious to see other trucks' behavior because my Rivian also has the same issue as this, and then Rivian sent a few software updates adjusting some of the behavior, and at least in the case of Rivian, my understanding is a lot of it had to do with the Samsung supplied cells and the parameters in which they could operate and how long they could regen for um, under certain conditions, and I think that might be similar here. Uh, with the 4680 cell. I, I can't imagine it's thermals. I can't imagine it's uh, really anything other than just trying to protect either the cabling into the battery pack or something to do with handling the energy into the battery pack. But for sure, it makes it a problem for towing in the mountains because now I have reduced braking performance and uh, you know, you're putting everything into the friction brakes and keep in mind with electric vehicles, typically the friction brakes are not the main point of focus because 99% of your braking is done with regen or at least with regen and friction braking. And uh, in the case of the Cybertruck, the physical brakes are just, they put such a, I don't know, a pad on there that has almost no grip on the rotor. You hit the brake pedal and you're like, are you sure? And then you have to like really get on the brake pedal versus actually the Silverado EV is brake by wire, which is really nice because it will automatically compensate for pressure. And you just touch the brake pedal in the Silverado and you're like, oh damn, I'm slowing down. And if you need to make an emergency stop, that truck is like, boom, stands on its nose. Hummer EV uses the same braking system. It's awesome, really good. GM, if anything they got right, it was their braking package on the Hummer and the Silverado. So here we are, you can see the beautiful views ahead and the steep decline right here. This is basically uh, what it's gonna be for the next few miles is, let's see, I'm completely off the throttle as an example. And look, there's an extra regen line. You can see it's backing off regen some more. Wow, it almost feels like it's free rolling. I have to go onto the physical brakes here. Just a dab of brakes, gently ease it through. Pretty wild, Alyssa, don't you think? Yeah, it really is not trying to slow us down too much. Yeah, and, and we should double check. I have our, you know, adaptive regenerative braking setting on, which might actually be making things worse because it's giving us more regen in a short period of time, and that might cause this to happen quicker. But still, I mean, we're not doing anything crazy extreme. Yeah, be really curious to see what this does up and down I-70 tomorrow as we tow over the Rockies. Well, we are officially out of Mountain Roads and we have come down to 287, which is basically our highway that goes to Wyoming. And so now we're gonna be able to see what it's like to tow at a little bit of highway speeds. Coming out of the mountains so far, we are 65 miles into our trek. We are now well under 1,000 watt hour per mile coming down. Have to say on the downhill, it's not crazy steep the whole way. So while we did have a regen limit for most of it, it was only a few bars. It didn't seem to impact us too much. So. Uh, yeah, now we're just going to get up 65 miles an hour, cruise between 65 and 70, and you can see we'll head back to the office uh, with some speed now. Let's see how it feels cruising along the way. I can already tell you, you got to be really mindful on the steering. You don't want to impact it really much at all. Otherwise, uh, you know, you'll start to feel the whole weight move around. It definitely is noticeable even at speed. So drive with your fingertips and be very careful. I hope Tesla adjusts the ratio while towing. Wow, like even around this corner, it's just put in pressure, but don't put in steering lock.
say coming off the highway now just sit sitting at about 60 65 miles an hour this thing is great really settled into itself you can definitely tell it's adapted to just sitting there and cruising and with a trailer it was nice and smooth and direct it had to be you know gentle with the steering i think that's certainly a negative the regen is certainly a negative the front power uh being very front wheel drive certainly a negative on loose surface but um those are probably the three main negatives other than that uh wow just awesome from a stability standpoint so this uh test is of course a little bit about the range of the vehicle uh, but not really like a full range test while towing. That will certainly come. And my impression of using the Cybertruck as a tow vehicle is um, there's two major drawbacks. Well, let's just say three. The first is the charging curve is pretty weak. It holds big power down low, but you really don't want to be trailering below 10% state of charge, let's just say, because you run the risk of BMS sway or a cell voltage hitting low, and it's just really rough on a battery to be giving it lots of juice at very low state of charge. So I try when I'm towing not to really go below 10 or at least 5%. So you're, you're knocking off 5% there. And then in terms of the charging curve of the vehicle, at least at the time of this recording, Cybertruck only holds over 250 kilowatts or equal to up to 29%. And because it has such a small battery pack and limited range, you really need to do an 80, 90, 95% charge while towing. And that is gonna take a while. And the charge port's in the wrong place. There are very few Tesla superchargers with pull-through locations. I think there's only one in all of the Denver metro area. Uh, in the North Glen location, and it's great. Love that it's there, but all it takes is one Model 3 to be parked there for no reason, and, well, now you're screwed and un unhooking your trailer. If it had a front charging port like the Rivian, I could actually nose this into a charging station, and I wouldn't have to unhook most of the time. So I really dislike the rear charge port from a towing perspective. And then the last point is just the range. You know, there is a range extender that... I shouldn't say there is. There's rumors of a range extender. Tesla has said they'll make a range extender uh, option that will go in the bed. I pre-ordered it with this truck, so hopefully I'll get it. Um, if they ever decide to make it, it's quite expensive, but it should add a lot of range. But then also it's going to eat into our payload capacity, which is going to severely reduce the amount of ton weight we can have on the trailer if we have a, a bunch of people in here, which means it will actually reduce our overall trailer maximum weight since you need like a 10 to 13% ton weight on your vehicle. So essentially what I'm saying is by the time you put that big ass battery in the bed of your truck, not only are you giving up bed space, but you're giving up payload capacity. And keep in mind, tongue weight goes towards payload capacity. And we're not sure how fast that extra battery will charge at a supercharger. So all I'm saying is electric is still the worst case for towing. And it's no question. It's got all the power in the world. It's got some regen in this one, but, um, it's, this is still an extreme test. The vehicles are not optimized for this. If you have to tow a lot, combustion is still, no question, the answer. Uh, however, I do think there was a lot Tesla could have done to optimize for the towing on the Cybertruck, and clearly it was just not a priority for them. So those are sort of my thoughts after the whole uh, test. The thermal performance of the drivetrain system seems to be amazing. However, the regen, long duration regen, uh, is definitely a problem and needs to be looked into. The stability is great. Um, you know, chassis wise, the Cybertruck feels like you could put twice the weight on this thing. Feels amazing. Uh, however, the, um, yeah, the steer by wire should have a slower ratio in uh, towing mode. So we're back at the office, 521. So what's that, roughly an hour and a half later, something like that. And again, we drove in medium suspension with the suspension in stiff and, um, Yep, acceleration in sport. We could have, of course, had even more acceleration. And if we come here to trips, 86 miles, I think it's like 85 point something, um, 824 watt hour per mile, 70 kilowatt hours. We've returned at 38% state of charge. So um, Alyssa, can I get any of your final thoughts after riding around in this for towing a pretty heavy load? Yeah, it did pretty good. 
I mean, I didn't really, um, I haven't driven it, so I, I don't really have that kind of comparison. But if it's anything like the Rivian and with the ease of towing, then um, then that's great. But yeah, definitely the charging, the curves, and the range side of things, I definitely wouldn't want to take this cross-country towing because I know how long that stuff takes, um, which is a long time, and it gets to you. But other than that, just for a shorter distance, it uh, seems like it'll it'll do great. Yep, I totally agree. Well, uh, yeah, let's run out. Let's look at the load. I think everything's covered in mud after those dirt roads, and then we'll end the video. Well, here we are to take a look at it. Just a little dirty, but it's a truck. It's meant to be <laughs> a couple little dirt spots here on the Rivian. But again, you guys know what this truck has been through far worse. I can't wait to actually use this as the tow rig. Maybe we'll tow that, but we have to put some weight in that because that weighs a few hundred pounds lighter than the Rivian does. Again, I'm not sure this is going to be a perfect scientific test because conditions are variable, other cars on the road are variable, and so many things. But it is a great way to evaluate the towing in an extreme situation. And I have to say, the Cybertruck, uh, man, it can handle it well with, again, a few issues, a few bugs, a few problems. But no question, after this, I have more confidence than actually I did before I started this test in that I'm actually maybe even going to use this as my tow rig, at least for around town, more than my Rivian. I still think the front charging port on my Rivian and a little bit more energy capacity will win me over. It's also got a better charging curve than the Cybertruck. However, this should have better thermal management. So it's like, oh, there's things on each that I really like. And I'm just so familiar with towing with that truck that yeah, it's still a pain in the ass. This is not the big step change and improvement I was hoping it would be over the Rivian, but it is at least good enough that I may end up, like I said, using this instead of the Rivian to do some work around town to move cars around and tow whatever we got to tow, you know, stuff like whatever we have over here. Anyway, um, that was awesome. Let's evaluate some of the data, have some final thoughts on the rustic ring, and then we'll end this video. Well, there we have it, the end of the rustic ring. Uh, we are going to create a section on the autospecstudios.com website with all of the data from the rustic ring. Basically the state of charge check-ins that we had throughout here, and then we'll be able to compare the performance of the Cybertruck against other vehicles. I plan to run the Silverado, the F-150 Lightning, and the Rivian R1T, all with a very similar weight load, very high 9,000 pound, close to 10,000 pound rating. Uh, the reason that I'm gonna do a, a 10,000 pound load is not every vehicle is like the Rivian and the Cybertruck where they can tow 11,000 pounds max. The F-150 Lightning and the Silverado EV4 WT, as an example, can only tow 10,000 pounds maximum, and I want them all to kind of compete in the same area. The Silverado 3 WT can actually tow 12,500 pounds, which is pretty awesome. I didn't know that until we had our, our uh, rental truck, but Hertz doesn't allow us to tow on that one, so I can't run that particular truck. So stay tuned. We'll have more data and more analysis coming soon on this, probably on the Out of Spec podcast once we run a couple trucks through there. So subscribe there. Let me know what you think about this test. Help me dial it in. What would you guys like to see more of, less of? Did you like the style of video? Um, you know, let me know what you're thinking. Hopefully you learned a little bit about towing with the Cybertruck. I certainly did. And um, yeah, just, just a fun one from my side. So thanks so much for watching. Looking forward to your comments. See you on another one again soon. Bye-bye.